Welcome friends of the Greasy Shop Rag. Today we're going to take a look at an Echo CS 500P chainsaw. Customer complaint is that there's a big hole in the fuel tank. Now when he brought this saw in here, he was concerned that parts and labor were going to make this repair uh, too costly and maybe not worth it. Maybe he should buy a different saw. Well, after talking with him and confirming that the saw runs really good, uh, there's, a really, there's not a good reason for that. You're going to be underneath under half the replacement cost of the saw, so there's no good reason not to fix it. Uh, I don't know. I don't remember if the fuel tank was $100 or not, but I do remember that the whole bill was going to be less than half the replacement cost. I think I have a half an hour labor into this. So the footage that you're seeing here has been cut down from 30 minutes of the total repair time. Now what we're doing is we're trying to gain access to the anti-vibe mount or rubber buffer or whatever you want to call the rubber pieces that connect the handle and the fuel tank to the crankcase. On this Echo, those pieces are uh, they're rubber and they have a plastic cap on them that holds their shape and inside they have a bolt. So here we're removing that bolt. And that bolt went right into the end of the fuel tank. Same on this side. So essentially the front of the fuel tank is disconnected. Uh, we got the handle on here yet. That's going to be in our way. And everything that's on this tank has to get swapped over to the new tank yet. You know, the new one doesn't come with a trigger assembly or a few other pieces. Five screws hold the handle on. I'm kind of keeping those screws all in one pile there. Get that right out of the way. Now we're going to have to gain access to the carburetor because we're replacing a fuel tank and obviously there will be a fuel line associated with that. Just pop that right off of the carburetor. And then uh, we're going to remove the trigger assembly. So there's a screw on the side of this handle and that passes all the way through and holds this bottom piece on and then this top cover. Then you'll find the operator presence lever which is spring loaded. So be careful pulling this apart. And then there's a pin that holds the trigger itself in place. We'll just take a punch and drive that pin out. And then be careful removing this trigger because there's a spring on there and if the spring pops off you want to be able to remember how it was on there, right? Alright, there's a couple of anti-vibe mounts on this end of the saw. And sometimes these plastic covers, they pop right off of there. And sometimes like this one, they'll just fight you. And I didn't order any extra plastic covers, so I gotta kind of be careful here not to wreck this. And one on this side. Now look how easy this cover pops off of here. Bada bing, bada boom. We'll get that bolt out of the way. So the fuel tank is completely separated from the crankcase now. Because we have our fuel line off, we can just pull it out of the way. 
So there's our tank. It's pretty much bare bones. I mean, there is a hose coming out of it for the tank vent. But that's really about all you get with it. So we'll switch over some of this uh, cushion mount anti-vibe monkey business and our tank vent. And that tank vent has, um, there's a little notch in the top of that tank that it kind of fits into right there so it doesn't go flopping around. We're going to need our fuel line. So first thing we got to do is take the filter off. And this filter looks really good, so we're going to reuse that. Just be careful removing this line so you don't wreck it. And then when you put it back in, you know, you could grab the end from the inside of the tank and tug on it a little bit and pull it through. Or you could use uh, something like this plastic pry bar here and, and push it through from the top. Just be careful that you don't damage it because, you know, if it doesn't fit snug, it's going to leak fuel. Our new filter goes on and our cap. Now I'm going to kind of stage the fuel tank in place. And I want to get that fuel line pushed up through the bottom. But you can see the tank isn't where it needs to be yet. So I'm kind of putting a clamp on that fuel line so I don't lose it. Because if I get this all put together and then that fuel line popped out of there and it's laying underneath and i got to take it apart again, not going to be happy. And here it's just a matter of getting things lined up. Once they're, uh, you can see the hole through the rubber buffer, start putting screws in. It's not hard to remember what screws go where on this. All of those screws that go through the rubber buffers are a special style of screw. Uh, that's why I have a separate ratchet out just for running those in. So, um, you know, it's not that big a deal having all those parts laying out there, you know, what goes where. And then putting these plastic... Uh, covers back in place can be uh, easy or it can be hard. I mean, look, that one dropped right in. The other one I was fighting. Just make sure they're in there so they don't pop out on the customer. You know what I mean? Now that we know that the fuel tank's not going anywhere, we can put that fuel line on. Put the rest of our buffer screws in. Alright, we'll get this cap here on this anti-vibe mount, and then we can put together the chain guide plate, the felling dog, all that stuff that was covering it up. I don't know why I'm using a manual screwdriver for this. Look at all them power tools that are just laying there waiting to be used. I guess I must have been feeling a little retro, eh? This is the one Phillips head screw. And then we'll put our handle back on. Reverse order how we took it apart, right?
And there's that one oddball screw. Now we're using a proper power tool for the job. Trigger assembly. Hopefully the spring is still in place where you found it. If not, you know, sometimes I take pictures of these kinds of things before I take them apart. Just in case something happens, I can go back to the picture and see what it's supposed to look like. Just make sure that trigger is lined up before you start pounding that pin through there. You don't want to end up with a situation where you, you know, wreck that trigger and then got to buy a new one. Operator presence lever. Get it on top of the spring. This is the only tricky part. You got to do this little quick maneuver. There you go. This is kind of a unique design, the way this bottom cap goes up into place. It kind of latches in the front. And then there's a one screw in the back that passes through and holds everything together. Function check looks like the trigger's working the way it's supposed to, the throttle's working. Get our air filter cover back in place. We'll top this thing off, make sure it doesn't leak any fuel. And just for giggles, we'll fire it up and make sure it runs. So that's all I got for you on the Echo CS500P chainsaw fuel tank replacement. Thanks for watching. Later.